so as the pandemic has done its thing and as uh, there's been vehicle shortages and chip shortages and part shortages and labor shortages, there's a one brand to me, and I am somewhat biased because I am a Porsche guy, that I feel has really been hurt a lot by all of the happenings since March 2020. You know, Porsche lost a bunch of cars on a ship that, that burnt down and sank. They launched, lost a bunch of cars on another ship. Uh, I had a car that was on that ship that uh, was badly damaged. Of their models, 60% uh, of their models, the wiring harnesses are made in Ukraine. And they have had a really difficult time getting new cars out the door. In my opinion, and this is not a fact from Porsche specifically, the dealers have taken somewhat of a Ferrari mentality, whereas, you know, because all of a sudden you could go buy a base 911 for $120,000 and it's worth $150,000 the next day, there are lots of cases where the person that bought the car is actually going to make more money on the car than the dealer and Porsche themselves. And I think what's happened is that the dealers as well as Porsche has said, hey, we want to make lifelong customers of people that are actually going to drive and enjoy the driving experience. So what I've found and what I'm seeing from Porsche dealers, whether it be ours or others, is they are looking for long-term clients and they don't want to just give a car to anybody. For example, I have a friend that wants a new 992 GT3 and he owns a 991.2 2018 GT3. Really nice car, well optioned, manual transmission, but he's put like almost 20,000 miles on the car, which for one of those cars is a lot of miles. Most of them have between six and 10,000 miles on them. And because of that, he didn't think that it was advantageous for him to reach out to the dealer he bought that from to order another car. When he finally decided he wanted, they said, oh, sorry, we don't have any allocations, like too bad. And we're getting way over sticker for them anyway. So good luck. So what a lot of dealers are doing is, is, hey, I don't want to charge over sticker for our car, but I've got a line around the block and then down around the next block that wants one of these vehicles. How do I make it so that it makes sense for me and it makes sense for the consumer? And oh, by the way, you got to wait a year plus to get the car. What we know is that if I'm going to sell you a car at below market value, which is a GT3 at sticker, okay, I can't pay $30,000 over for your used GT3. That's just not fair. So what I will do is that I will overpay for your GT3 if you buy what's called a bridge car. So basically you trade your GT3 and you buy a 911 Turbo, a 911 4S, a 911 S, whatever it is, a new one, a nice one, you pay window sticker for the car. You enjoy that car until your new car comes in, you trade it in under the next one. It's smart from a dealer standpoint and from a Porsche standpoint. The dealer is getting the trade now. The dealer is selling a unit now. Porsche is selling a unit now. And you now have a 911 that somebody probably wouldn't have bought right now, it maybe would have sat on a dealer lot or wherever, and you've now gained another new customer. Essentially what's happening is, is Porsche dealers are willing to sell cars at sticker, but you got to buy a couple cars. You got to become a, uh, uh, you got to become a customer. You can't just walk in and say, I want a GT3 or a GT3 RS and expect that they're going to sell it to you a window sticker because you can go flip it and make a hundred thousand dollars or in the GT3 RS case, probably $200,000. It's just not fair to anybody. It's not fair to the enthusiast that really wanted that car to drive it, but they couldn't get one because they couldn't get an allocation because five flippers got in line to buy it and sell it and make a hundred thousand dollars on it. And that guy's never going to be able to buy that car because he's not going to pay a hundred thousand dollars over sticker for it because A, he can't afford it or B, doesn't see the value, right? So by Adding a layer of, well, yes, you can have that, but you got to buy another car and you got to keep it until the next one comes in. You kind of remove a lot of flippers from the marketplace because they're not willing to buy a car, put up the money and own it for however many months and then put it towards the next car. So now you've found a way to sell another car, take in another trade and sell the GT3 or the GT3 RS at the right price to the actual enthusiast and weed out the flippers. I think it's something that probably should have been put in place from an OEM standpoint 
a while ago, but I don't think they really had the foresight until because of the type of market that we're in for it to actually happen. So if you're someone watching this video that wants a new 911 GT3 or a new 911 G GT3 RS or even a Turbo S at this point, and you want to go into the dealer and say, I want to order one, I think you need to change your tact. And what I think you do is realize that you're probably going to have to give up the car that you have right now. And you're probably going to need to buy a car that you don't necessarily want, but you could probably enjoy. And go into the dealer and tell them, hey, I would like a new 992 GT3. I understand that you've got a long list of people that want to do them, but I'm willing to buy a car you either A, have on your lot right now. Please just don't hurt me on trade-in. Or maybe I want a Macan or a Cayenne for my significant other as well. Become a customer. Don't just feel like you're entitled to the GT3 or the GT3 RS. And know that whatever car that you bought, you're probably going to have to keep until your GT3 or GT3 RS comes in. Drive it, enjoy it, have fun with it, and you're going to end up trading it in on that car. Because these GT3s are selling for anywhere, depending upon, you know, spec, sixty dollars to $100,000 over window sticker. Rather than go out and buy a used one, even though it probably only has 500 miles on it, for sixty dollars to $100,000 over window sticker, you can use that sixty dollars to $100,000 over window sticker and put it towards another 911 or another Cayman or whatever with your Porsche dealer and put yourself in a better position to get the car that you want at the price that you want to pay. And also enjoy that car that isn't going to depreciate that fast anyways in the meantime, but ultimately getting the car you want at the price that you want to pay from that dealer by establishing yourself with that dealer. When you walk in to buy that car, you know, you can't really act like you as the customer doing the dealer a favor, like maybe when you walked in to buy a Ford Explorer five years ago and the dealer had 20 of them on the lot and they had to beg you to buy it. It's just not that way. Again, there is a line down the street and around the block waiting for that GT3. So if you take and you go in with the right attitude that, you know, hey, look, I understand you could sell this car to anyone, but I'm willing to become a customer. I will buy something else today. I'll maybe buy a second car today as well. I'm willing to do that to get the GT3. You all of a sudden have made a friend with that dealer. You are now becoming a long-term customer that they're going to, that they're going to want referrals from, and you're going to give them referrals. And now you've created a great relationship. Now you're going to start to get offered all the cool stuff. So when the other allocations for the touring shows up, when the RS shows up, the dot two nine nine two, whenever it inevitably comes out, you've done all of the right things. You've kind of now opened the keys to that kingdom. So rather than take the I'm not paying over sticker and I'm not taking another car and in that adversarial relationship with the dealer, if you do things that help them, they want to help you. Those are the kind of customers that dealers want to deal with. They, they want to help the person that wants to help them sell more cars and provide referrals and so on and so forth. But if you walk in there acting like they owe you something, you're probably never going to get that car. And they're going to show you the one in the showroom floor that they traded back from the customer that already bought it and enjoyed it for a thousand miles. And here it is for $75,000 over sticker. So uh, unfortunately, um, and fortunately, depending upon the way that you look at this, you need to do the right things to get the car that you want when it comes to a Porsche dealer. And really even with some other brands too, like you can't just walk into a Ford dealer and buy a GT500. They're getting twenty, thirty thousand dollars over sticker for those cars, which is insane, but they are. So maybe you buy your F-150 and your Explorer and you get the GT500 because maybe you need an F-150 or an Explorer as well. So uh, there are many brands that that you kind of fall into this category, but Porsche seems to be the one that over the last year has really been able to create more customers for their dealers, as well as create more happy customers to get the car that they want by following the right path to get that car. Right now, I need you to check out Auto Tempest at the link in the description below to find whatever car you're searching for. They make Car Trek possible and they've been a supporter of Benwicky for the last four years. So please check them out now to find your next car and support them for supporting us.